Okay, YouTube, um, we left off with, uh, you know, testing the grid tie uh, portion of the experiment. And we began when I turned off the grid tie inverter. I actually turned it off at my little uh, timer here, just hitting the uh, manual button there. And I, I turned off the grid tie inverter. And I also turned it off, um, you know, kind of afterwards at the switch. So now it's not no longer on both. It's just on my uh, regular uh, inverter and uh you know feeding some accessories and and my transfer switch if i you know choose to turn it on and we uh began the process of just letting the batteries recharge and right now the local time is uh 221 and we began the process around 12 uh 41 or or you know maybe 20 20 minutes to one or something like that maybe 12 you know 12 41 12 45 or something like that but uh, the, the, the point is, it's not even two hours yet, and my battery bank is now up to 28.3 volts. Uh, you can see that my uh, charge controllers are going into float mode uh, because my batteries are full. And you can see the voltage that is, uh, is at 28.3. It was at, uh, when I ended the test, it ended at 25.1 as soon as I turned off the inverter, it jumped up to 25.7. And now it's at 28.3. Uh, we have four amps coming into the battery. Uh, again, uh, you see the low amperage because, again, we're going into float mode. And the uh, state of charge is at 100%. And it's not; it hasn't even been two hours completely. So basically around, uh, you know, maybe an hour and a half. So, and um, as you recall in my other video, if you have not seen the videos, if you're a new viewer and you haven't seen the other vi videos in this particular series dealing with uh, grid tie inverters connected to a 24 volt uh, battery bank, um, then I would, you know, advise you to, to watch the other videos to get, a, to get the context of what we're talking about and how we got to this point. Um, in the last video, it was the depth of discharge uh, was 10% and the state of charge was 90%. So from 90% uh, to 100% it only took my system uh, approximately an hour and a half to charge. So uh, in essence I ran my grid tie inverter. Um, I started the testing or the experimentation around uh, 8.30 in the morning, um, you know, I was doing some documentation and everything, and I actually turned the grid tie inverter on probably around 8.41, um, and I turned the grid tie inverter off at 12.41, so for a total of four hours, and during that time frame, um, I got, you know, uh, an average of 473 watts going back into the house 473 watts going back into the house during that four hour period um, that power was coming from the panels into the battery bank and flows out of the battery bank into the grid tie inverter into the house the battery bank was a buffer area it stored the power and it gave me the benefit uh, or gave my uh, grid tie inverter the, benef uh, the benefit of having a constant voltage and a constant uh, power, so uh, uh, constant amps, uh, so therefore it gave me constant watts, which is uh, roughly 473 watts of continuous power going into the house for four hours. So to get the, the amount of power, just multiply four times 473, and that gives you roughly 1.8 kilowatts, 1.9 kilowatts of power going back into the house. Um, but in essence, um, I believe, at least for my own benefit, that I've verified that it, is, that it is practical, okay, that it is feasible to use your battery bank as a buffer area for your grid tie inverter uh, to put power back into your house, provided it's, a, you know, it's under the conditions. For instance, the temperature uh, you know, stayed on the outside. Or it got as high as uh, 70 degrees on the outside. Um, uh, you know, up to around 12 o'clock uh, or 1240, uh, 1241 up to 1 o'clock. It got to like 7 degrees on the outside. On the inside, it was hovering around uh, between 71 and 80 degrees. Now it's, it, you know, it finished off at like 80 degrees here, which is good for the batteries. So, um, and the power coming in from both charge controllers, I have two solar arrays 
this solar array uh, on under good uh, conditions will give me uh, on average you know uh, 270 watts of power and this charge controller on you know in good conditions will give me on average 400 watts of power now you have the cables and the wiring so you do have the resistance there so you have to derate them for that so as opposed to 670 watts of total power I would say on average you know I could expect at least maybe a good 600 watts you know being very you know pessimistic and optimistic at the same time so I would say out of 670 watts I would expect to get 600 between I'd say 550 and 600 watts out of the system but anyway uh, after again uh, after about an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes my battery bank is back at a hundred a uh, hundred uh, percent state of charge 28.3 uh, volts which means basically it's it's a full charge it's a fully fully charged system and right now it's in float mode and both before you know you can look at both charge controllers you can see this this blinking light that means it's in float mode on both sides so I think I have you know I won't say proven I will just say giving you something to think about um, that if you you know if you have a, a system that actually has a decent amount of power coming in uh, you can feasibly hook your grid tie inverter up to your battery bank okay using it as a buffer to put power back into your house this roughly gives me about uh, around 90 maybe 95 90 between 93 95 percent efficiency um, you know rated efficiency you know as opposed to 500 obviously I'm get, only getting 473 and at some case early in the morning I got like 475 so that's about 95 percent efficiency now one other thing about these things they do get warm okay they can get hot however you can offset that by buying some cheap fan and putting it directly in line or you know just blow it on top of your your power inverter okay I got the air going in through here and being blown out at the back okay so there's good airflow going on the top and there's good airflow going inside of the unit itself being blown out so this unit in four hours all it, it just it got warm it didn't get hot really hot it just got it got warm to the touch okay so um, in the next uh, well you know this should pretty much conclude <laughs> my testing and verification of whether or not you know you can use feasibly use a grid tie inverter connected up to a decent sized battery bank now this battery bank is uh, 6600 watts of power however it's you know because these are AGMs I can have a depth of discharge of 80 percent so that means I have 20 percent uh, I mean I have only have 80 percent of usable power the other 20 percent is not usable so that drops my wattage down to 5280 watts or 5.2 kilowatts of power which is a decent amount of power to to uh, do what I need to do um, these experiments uh, if you look at the other videos you'll know the you know all the parameters and all of the uh, I mean the environmental conditions uh, in my experiment so it kinda gives you an idea but in general if you have good Sun um, you know favorable wet weather conditions uh, it is feasible to to perform the experiment and implement it you know on your own um, you know as always safety is critical these uh, these power inverters you know these grid tie inverters are good they're cheap uh, will I run them when I'm not at home no I will not run them when I'm not at home because I you know they're good I don't trust them you know they're not UL listed and I wouldn't advise you to run them at while you're not at home either okay yes I have a timer and so forth on it and that's fine when I'm at home but when I'm not at home I will take the time out to unplug this thing um, and just lay it to the side so and you know uh, so that no one else will plug it in or or better yet it just you know stays you know off I also take the time out to turn this switch from both to just one my single inverter you know effectively you know turning that inverter off also again this concludes my verification testing hopefully it helps someone give someone some ideas if you have some questions leave some comments and so forth and uh, you know for the most part uh, that's it again uh, this is not it, this may not be the best way to do it but you know it's it's a feasible way to do it you know and just thinking outside of the box but anyway um, 
uh, YouTube, uh, you know, if you have some questions, let me know. Have a good one.